after 10 years in property investing, here's what I would do if I had to start all over again today. So the reason I've chosen this strategy is something that I would start again is because I found it late. Well, I found it multiple times. In my multiple strategies that I did, tried, failed, tried, failed, I tried this strategy maybe three times before really finding out its benefits and why I should use it as the foundations for my business. And this is what I tell everybody to do. You've heard about it before, deal sourcing or deal trading. In America, they call it wholesaling. In the UK, we find it deal packaging, deal sourcing. Packaging is the whole package. So it's finding, doing the work, tenanting. That's the package that you provide. Uh, the sourcing is the finding of the property typically. Trading is much the same, just with a better name for SEO purposes. But essentially what we're going to do is we are going to find a deal, we are going to have an investor, and we're going to connect them up and we're going to get paid for it in the middle, like an estate agency. However, what estate agencies do is they have wanky little offices where shitty sh suits don't really know what they're talking about. They will then have the client come to them, give them a property, and they will get paid by that client to find a buyer. The buyer pays them nothing, the seller does. What we do is the opposite. The, the buyer pays us the money, the seller doesn't. This is the benefit that we have because we can go and get real good properties with a load of investors who are selling the property for free. Even better, if you really wanna make more money, charge both. Deal sourcing is about numbers. The reason I say that this is a foundational strategy is because with any strategy, whatever you choose, you will be sourcing for yourself. So if you're in a commercial conversions, you're gonna be sending out a load of letters, speaking to a load of people that have commercial buildings. You're gonna be speaking to the commercial agents. You're gonna be doing loads of work and there's gonna be a load of stuff. Oh, fucking hell, that one's a bit big for us. Yeah, no, we can't do anything with that, I'm afraid. Yeah, we'll pass that. If you find anything, 10 rooms or more. Yeah, well, actually, that's not quite in our sort of gold mine area. God, I hate property, property people anyway. It's not in your area that you that you operate in. So it might be just outside of it. Oh, well, yeah, we, we don't operate there because we don't have the resource. Don't worry about it. All of that is money you've just given away, especially on the developments and commercial conversion side. Big fees there. I'm talking about the smallest stuff. So you're just starting out. You want to start a buy-to-let business or a rent-to-rent -rent business even. That's what we do a lot of because it's quick money. And it's done when the contract's signed, not three months later when the solicitors have pulled the finger out their assholes or the head actually so what i recommend you do is to start identifying what you want to do and the deals you want to do and then create a deal sourcing business which is the foundation of yours that won't quite work however i think i might have an investor here bang three grand you've monetized the work you did for that relationship to be passed for you to get past the deal by that relationship you built the amount of viewings you have to do you might do 20 30 viewings of which only one suits your criteria however the criteria might be there for somebody else. Five of those deals might come through and earn you 15K. This is why I tell people, foundation, deal sourcing, your strategy up next, and then your historical next step stuff. But you've got to do deal sourcing to make sure that you are monetizing every opportunity you can whilst building a really good investor list. So why do I believe this and what is my story? Well, I don't really like going too much into my story because I don't think you lot really give that much of a shit. But I'll do it briefly so it gives you an idea on my experience, etc. So I started at 22 years old, 10 years ago. <sighs> Looking young, I know. I went straight into purchasing with investor funds a block of flats crazy but it went really well the second one not so much went fucking terribly and we lost six figures i then wanted desperately to quit my job so i could go full-time into property because i needed to make up the money that i'd lost so rent to rent was forced upon me thrust upon me and i got it and it took me three months to get my first deal and then i got a deal a month straight after that and i ended up at the height of our rent to rent business 18 properties turning over around 15 grand uh, profit rather um, 15 grand a month on those things but my God, is that strategy fucking painful. The tenants, the constant management, the constant maintenance, the constant arguments, the constant, oh shit, I've been given notice, I need to find someone. The constant, I've left along with the bed that I've stolen from your room and not told you about. But the people dying in the room and not knowing what to do with their fucking stuff, knowing you're not going to get rent, but you can't really chuck a dead man's stuff just out of a window. There are so many problems with rent to rent in the standard format, I cannot tell you. So, there's a couple of tips within there as I've babbled along with my story. Number one is that it is the foundation and you can monetize it and it can pay your wages to allow you to do other stuff that you want to do long term. The passive income purposeful shit. 
Um, secondly, the important part is finding a niche, and I've spoken about this in other videos. Your niche must be either an area that you know, like the back of your hand, you know what alleyways you don't want to be near, what shops are shitholes, what areas are up and coming, where you can buy a shit house on a good road. All of these things are super important, and you can be that guy in that area that people know. Secondly, the second option is a strategy-based specific. This is the one we've gone down. We'll cover the entire country. As long as it's social housing, we don't care. As long as it meets our clients' criteria or our criteria, we'll do the deal, we'll house people. Another point to make about deal sourcing, right, is people will go around telling you, oh, I'll make a thousand pound a month from this rent to rent deal. Facts of the matter is you might do once or twice. All the other times you've got a void, or two, by the way, completely possible, or another thing that happened to me, an entire house where I'd placed them so well left all at the same time to go and get a house all by their self. Completely and utterly something that is a killer for you and your business. Not only that, but the amount of time you have to spend there, the amount of time you have to spend getting cleaners to report to you, conversations with fucking adults about things like taking bins out. Time versus money in is poor when it comes to rent to rent. The headline figures look great. Of course they do. But the reality of getting those full figures every single month is slim to fucking none. With deal sourcing, three grand for one deal that you were looking at anyway, right? Imagine how long it's gonna take you to get three rent to rent deals that have repaid your initial investment, typically probably six months if we're gonna be sort of average. So it takes you six months to get your initial investment back before you've made a profit. And then you need three very fucking good deals at a thousand pound a month. I'd probably say more like six rent to rent deals at 500 quid a month. So you need six deals. You need all that upfront capital to put into them, like updating them, getting an HMO license sometimes, furniture. And then you've got to wait for all that capital to come back in before you see a profit. This is the other thing, financial freedom within a month. It's not been financial freedom within a month because you put 10 grand into the fucking house, you moron. So before we go into the next section where I'm going to cover how to source without any compliance whatsoever, how to master your niche and some other real good tips to make sure that your foundational business of deal sourcing is profitable and gives you what you need out of it, plus sourcing for yourself and stay to the next bit. However, if you have enjoyed the video so far and enjoy my content and you haven't subscribed yet, it means the world to me to see these sub subscriber numbers go up just mainly for my ego. So if you could do that for me, that would be fantastic. And I'll continue banging out as much good stuff as I can. And please do let me know if you've got anything you'd like me to cover. So three top tips that I've identified to make sure that your foundational business works in its own right, as well as providing you the um, deals and properties that you need for your main predominant property business. So number one is understanding the needs and the preferences of your investor. So Obviously, we've got to find the investors. This comes from documenting your journey very simply. Spend time in Facebook groups, LinkedIn, and my latest hack, which I'm going to reveal to you guys, which is property tribes. Generally full of dickheads, but it is full of dickheads with money and property problems that you can solve, right? Number two, your niche is the important bit. You've seen it all over social media where someone goes, does anyone know um, someone who can find me a property in Stoke? And they go, oh, tag, 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 tag. And there's all the people that talk about Stoke. They're struggling to find good things. Don't get me wrong, but they said they're probably going to go half decent football team, invest there in the hope they might do something in the future. Um, all jokes aside, every area has benefits. And it, the more you understand your area, the more you'll understand the benefits. The benefit of Stoke, for instance, is it's fucking cheap. And there will be things like hotels. There will be things like the football stadium, which probably hosts loads of stuff. There will be things like big hospitals, which has hospital staff. And there will be these little mini ecosystems in these deprived... <laughs> deprived areas. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, anything up north is deprived to me, by the way. So people from Stoke, don't get too upset about this. I don't think I've ever been. I went once, actually. I went to a Port Vale game. And every single area will have its own little ecosystem. And that is your job as the sourcer and whose niche it is to find those ecosystems and to sell the fuck out of the benefits of them. Number three, and a way in which you can start with zero pounds, typically. And this is one that's been in the news recently about a co-sourcer getting done for not being compliant. Well, there's ways in which you do this without compliance. So don't listen to that bullshit. So co-sourcing is a form of sourcing, but you co-source with somebody else. So typically it was you go find them a deal, 
and they've got a big list of clients they can't find enough deals for, you sell it via this person, they give you a cut of the fee. They do say, however, if you are actively viewing the property that then gets sourced, you are then required to be compliant. Technically, that is legally correct. If you come and work with us, however, you will be sourcing us a deal directly and we do not require you to be compliant to do that. Therefore, you can do so no problem. So if anyone else wants you to do it directly with them and is happy for you not to be compliant, then you don't need to be in my humble opinion. So quick tip on that. If you do want to work with us and help us sell social housing deals and get paid large commissions from a thousand pound per deal, then click on the link below in the description or on my Instagram, wherever you want to find me, you will find the link there. Our partnership program is built around helping you help us find deals, which then house people that need it the most. We've got around 40 people in the partnership at the moment. We tell you everything about building so personal brand, social proof, how to deal with investors, close investors, how to find deals, appraise deals. We'll give you the whole lot in the hope that you'll use that expertise, bring us deals, bring us investment money, and then we pay you as part of it. It's a great group of people of which helping each other, holding each other accountable, and just changing their lives with life-changing money. So if you do want to find out about that, bang the link in below. It's been great to talk to you. Hopefully you found that valuable and I will see you at the next one.